Well, it's the time of year where everybody is talking about Dracula. So I want to talk about three distinct versions. And first up, do yourself a favor and check out Dracula from 1931. This one is based on the stage play adapted from the novel. It isn't the most action-packed version of the story, or necessarily scary, but it's so spooky and fun and, of course, the most iconic. Dracula was made just a few years into the sound era, and it marked the beginning of the Universal Monster series. And, like most of those movies, it is lean. I mean really lean. This thing clocks in at a tight 74 minutes, but it still fits in all the important parts of any straight Dracula adaptation. Renfield comes to a Transylvanian castle to help its weirdo owner lease property around London. He promptly goes nuts. <laughs> Dracula arrives in England on a ship whose whole crew is dead, and he settles into a place called Carfax Abbey. He starts creeping in on a woman named Mina and her friend Lucy. I think he's fascinating. Oh, I suppose he's all right. But give me someone a little more normal. Standing between her and eternal damnation is her love interest, Jonathan Harker, and scientist and all-around vampire hater, Dr. Abraham Van Helsing. A most distinguished scientist whose name we know, even in the wild of Transylvania. It's not really scary at all to a modern audience, but it's spooky as heck. And I love how some of the special effects that are meant to be scary actually look adorable. Like, Dracula's castle has armadillos living in it for some reason. Maybe people were afraid of armadillos in the 30s, I don't know. And the bats are super cute. And there's even this bug that lives in its own little coffin. It's great. I think this one's so much fun because every single bit is just so iconic that the whole movie just feels like Halloween. So much cultural stuff that we associate with the holiday is derivative of these old Universal movies. And a couple of the performances basically defined the characters in the public consciousness forever. Dwight Fry, who plays Renfield, just goes so over the top playing a madman. It's magnificent. And of course, Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi is Dracula. If you dress up as a vampire for Halloween, you're dressing up as Bela Lugosi. Anybody who does a vampire voice is doing Bela Lugosi. Children of the night. The man just is Dracula, to the point where it's so iconic, it actually almost makes it harder to get into the movie as a modern viewer. Because the performance is so legendary, it's sort of hard to imagine these people live in a world where they haven't already heard of Dracula. The whole movie, people are like, Hmm, there's something strange about this Count Dracula. And your brain is like, yeah, I know. He looks like Dracula, and he's from Transylvania, and his name is literally straight up Count Dracula. Uh, he's clearly a Dracula. Like, how do you not know how Dracula this guy is? He's the most Dracula. Any anyway, back on topic. The sets in the movie and the lighting are both gorgeous, and again, it just feels like Halloween. It's a perfect movie for the season. Drop your plans and check it out. What music they make.